course, any further increase in hostilities in the fighting is really going to have a devastating uh, results on the ground. Um, there are more than 2.5 million people inside Greater Idlib, and half of them have already gone through that already, going from different areas, whether it's from Aleppo or Eastern Ghouta or rural Damascus. They've gone through this heavy fighting. They fled these fighting under very difficult circumstances. And now, after they have reached Idlib, people are living in fear and uncertainty, um, in addition to the very critical matters that are inside, whether in the camps or prices uh, have risen up. 25% probably of the health structures are already either partially working, destroyed, or looted. So just having to think that if the hostilities and the fighting becomes even more intense, how are the hospitals going to, to handle the influx of wounded? How are they going to get medicine? There are a lot of things that, that, that can be very catastrophic in terms of the civilians and the civilian population that are inside Idlib at the moment. And from that joint statement, it seems that uh, the Turkish president did manage to, to win a reprieve, perhaps, for Idlib before a full-on military assault. But how are NGOs preparing for the consequences of such an assault? Any type of, of course, as us, as the Red Cross and, and, and other NGOs and partners in general, first of all, we have to keep reminding all the parties to the conflict to spare civilian lives and to protect the infrastructure that are vital for their survival. Now, in generally speaking, um, of course, we have to do our utmost. As, as the Red Cross, it was hard for us to get access or direct access in Idlib, but we are supporting through our support to the Syrian Red Crescent inside, uh, with ambulances, training volunteers, even um, in, an, in operating in a small ICU unit in one of the pediatric hospitals. Uh, we are also ready to um, to support our warehouses, our, have all the materials, medicines, food supplies, and other aid uh, ready, and we will be able to, to gain access if we have the guarantees from all parties if if as well we can we can be guaranteed that our teams are protected so these are all of course uh, things that we can do and i think everybody is working really really hard at the moment to to try uh, to try and work towards what will happen especially as we expect there's going to be an influx of people trying to flee the area in Idlib. Sarah Azakari, thank you very much for having spoken to us on behalf of the ICRC.